Hey everybody, what's going on? So a couple surgeons reached out to me recently because they wanted to uh, know a little bit more about planning implants in the zygoma using the CareStream software. Uh, I'm certainly not an expert in planning those types of implants, but I can at least uh, help them with, with the software manipulation. So that's what we did. I recorded the session uh, because I thought it would be instructive for others. And uh, But we wanted to keep it anonymous. So uh, I removed all the audio and just talking over it and kind of showing you what the surgeon did. So these uh, the video is actually uh, the surgeon manipulating the scan uh, because I wanted that to be uh, intact. And I'm just going to be talking kind of through what, what we did. So um, at first, uh, this is what the surgeon was was planning. And he was kind of having a hard time with with the software manipulation and getting the implants exactly where he wanted them, as you can see. He was using standard implants uh, from the implant library, but if you don't know where to find them, those those implants might be challenging to find because not every implant system is going to have really long implants for zygomatic planning. So um, there's another way to do it where you can actually create your own custom implant, which I'll show you here in a second. So I first wanted him to thicken up the slices in the panoramic view. That way we can actually see everything a little bit better. So you can see he's having a little bit of a hard time placing the implants exactly where he wants them. The implants moving only on the one plane. So we wanted to scratch that and replant it. Uh, but first we're going to create a custom implant. So we'll show you how to do that. Okay, so first you'll select the icon in the top right. It says custom implant management. It's that middle icon. And then you'll select create your own implant. And then you can begin building the implant. So you can put whatever manufacturer brand and reference you want just to kind of know exactly which one you're doing. The head length is really up to you. Catalog length is going to be how long you want your implant. Head diameter really should be up to you, but likely the same diameter as the actual implant. And if you want a different apical diameter. And you can see as you make those selections, you begin to build your implant. And then you can select which head you want and the threads, and you can kind of see it building as you go. I like to choose a different color just because it kind of stands out a little bit better than that little purple. And then when you're done, you select OK. Then select Close, and you're ready to plan your implant. OK, so we've removed the other implants, and we're going to begin planning. You're going to notice the shape of the arch that he's drawn. It's much wider than the normal maxillary arch, and you're going to need to do that to see the zygoma better. Plus, the cross-sectional line, where you can see we're dragging that to be much wider, and that's going to be also important to be able to see the zygoma in the scan. So I'm going to let some of this play out without talking over it, just so you can kind of see. I'll talk through some of the important points as we go. Move the slice up to the maxillary arch. Now we've maximized the cross-sectional view. And now trying to find a good spot to take some measurements. I had him zoom in a little bit further in those other views just to make it a little bit easier to see. So you can zoom in on your axial slice, you can zoom in on your panoramic curve. You might have zoomed in a little bit too much, but you get the picture. And it changes it back to slides, so you can kind of use the mouse wheel and scroll back and forth a little bit more easily. So now you can see the implant icon is selected. He's ready to take an implant measurement. And you'll notice that he's actually beginning the measurement in the zygoma, which would flip the implant upside down. So you always want to begin the measurement in the maxilla and then end in the zygoma. So it did flip it upside down. I've edited that part of the video out just to kind of save some time, but I just wanted to be clear that you should begin in the maxilla and then end in zygoma. Also, just so you understand, if I created the implant that's 55 millimeters long, when I take my measurement here to plan, I want to take a measurement that's pretty close to 55 millimeters, and that way the implant that I created will be automatically populated. So now you can see he's manipulating everything. We're going to look at the 3D rendering. You can see in the panoramic view, he's manipulating the angle of the implant. And like I said before, I'm just going to let 
this play out a little bit and not a ton of talking, you'll kind of see how he's manipulating everything and getting into position that he likes. Right now he's turning off the wireframes just to get rid of those planes, making it a little bit easier to see everything. So I'm sure there's more you can do when planning implants in the Zygoma. This is really just a little taste of what you can do and to get you started. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you guys around.